Hello, this is Haiku. I'm going to go through my top commons of Murders at Karloff Manor. And I'm going to do it in an anti-spoiler fashion. So I'm going to go through my honorable mentions and then work my way up from the top eight to uh, the top one card. Uh, uh, so it has, I narrowed it down to 13 cards I think deserve kind of mentions and the top cards that may see constructed popper play. Um, and this is specifically for arena popper, but um, there's a little bit of overlap with what cards are going to be kind of notable in both formats. Um, there's probably a little bit of difference toward the end at the top of the list. So uh, Snar Snarling Gorehound, I'm putting on here as an honorable mention, just to really uh, emphasize that this is just made to be a combo card. It's going to be pretty good. I don't think it's going to be reasonable in just as a value card. Um, if you play a bunch of two power creatures and and allow them to scry a lot or surveil a lot, I don't think it's going to be really that important. Um, but uh, as a combo card, I think this can really see some uh, great uh, effects. So we don't have the combo or don't have a way to kind of really break it right now on Arena, but every set allows these cards to suddenly break. Dramatic Accusation, uh, is similar to Gorehound, it's getting an honorable mention because this effect of activating ability and then this ability still happening, even if whatever happens to the Dramatic Accusation, which if you balance it and put it on another creature, it still stays in play and gets attached to the new creature and the alt creature gets shuffled into their library. So a great effect. Um, so I think this is going to eventually see play once it gets enough cards. Don't think that this is playable right now. It just costs a little bit too much. But um, if you can get some, you know, cost reducers and stuff like that to make it a little bit more viable. Um, there's tutors already for auras, so you can find them. Um, and then there's a lot of blink. So it's just very, very close. Red Herring, another honorable mention card. Uh, so, uh, basically I think it's a fine aggro card. I think it's outshone a little bit by, uh, Batterfist, Barb Batterfist. I think most of the decks that would want this type of haste to two effect, um, are probably looking for Barb Batterfist instead. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if this sees play in addition to the Batterfist or maybe a couple copies alongside a couple copies of Batterfist. So you have a mix of both. Um, so a strong card, but. I don't think it's quite there, so that's why it's relegated to honorable mention. All right, uh, the next honorable mention card is Gearbane Orangutan. Uh, this is another awesome, uh, flexible card where if you need to destroy artifacts, you can, and if you need a big 4 4 creature with reach, you can get it. Um, again, I don't think the meta is going to be really amenable to ground creatures. 4 4 is going to be pretty puny on the ground with slime around. Um, so, I don't think this effect is really where you want to be um, in the in the coming meta on Arena. Demand Answers. Um, I talked about it, how it was a very flexible card that really, the home is is in a Madness deck, but it's flexible enough it might see play as a couple copies. Um, yeah. Galvanize. Uh, again, I mentioned it because it's uh, the first time that we have a really viable removal spell that deals more than three damage on at instant speed on Arena. So that's nice for that. All right, now getting into the top eight. Pick your poison uh, makes it because it's just a very flexible answer. Uh, specifically, it deals with the bridges for one mana. So uh, still running your opponent for one mana is pretty pretty good. Uh, and then dealing with flyers as well as um, I think that there's always space for a uh, hexproof flyer deck and this kind of shuts that down. Uh, the enchantment option is sometimes viable, but most of the time I think you're going to be activating it for the, for the first and the last option. Makeshift binding, I think uh, really putting it on the list because we don't have access to Journey to Nowhere on Arena. And so until we do, this is going to be a fine option um to to deal with oozes um but uh that's basically it, the gaming life and being able to exile and repeatedly exile um, ooze every time you bounce it is why it gets such high marks on this thing but with the meta changing this is probably going to drop 
once a uh, journey to nowhere gets on arena, this is going to drop. But right now, it's the best of this kind of effect that we have. Going to the next card, extracted confection, a uh, uh, very efficient edict. We haven't had a two mana edict before on arena. At, well, other than Titan Blade um, at a sorcery. So, um, but the collect evidence six is going to be easy to pay for, and being able to hit the biggest creature is going to be great against the ooze decks that are going to be using random one ones to as fodder for edicts. So this kind of gets around that. So that's nice. Novice Inspector. Uh, this would have been a great card if oozes weren't going to dominate the meta. Now with oozes kind of dominating things, one two, uh, and then if you pay another two mana into it, then you can potentially cantrip. Just Really, really miserable. Now, if the meta was full of Mardu, Mardu Skyfisher decks and it was all about grinding value, this would have been awesome. But uh, I think we're going to move beyond that. We're going to be much more of a beatdown focused format for the next while. Deduce, it's going to be great because blue is going to get stronger in this meta. And this is just a solid um, card draw spell for blue to have. And there's a lot of synergies to use that artifact that it gives you. Reasonable Doubt. Uh, another great uh, counter spell, a quench effect, uh, and then not not being able to block or making your opponents not being able to block is going to be really important in this kind of beatdown focused meta. And then the best card of murders at Karlov Manor, slime against humanity. Um, it'll be really interesting how it affects the meta uh, on arena popper. Uh, I think it might be borderline too much. And the other issue against this card is because it's one of these effects where you can have any number of cards in your deck, it's going to be a little bit of boring to play with and against because it's going to be just so consistent at knocking down, uh, you know, a 5-5, five, five, a 6-6, six, six, a 7-7 seven, seven every turn for the rest of the game that you just have to deal with. Um, uh, so it really is going to warp things. Basically, you have to either burn to get around it you can't be attacking on the ground so you have to fly over it or you have to burn uh as a finisher or you play uh slimes of your own or you play uh a deck that can remove uh a slime every single turn and the only deck that i think can keep up with that i think the the skyfisher decks almost can the skyfisher hiding blade decks can almost keep up with that uh basically playing a skyfisher effect Bouncing the Titan Blade, replaying the Titan Blade, getting rid of the slime that they just played. But I don't think that's going to be enough. I, I think that this deck is going to be enough co more consistent at landing a threat every single turn that the Skyfisher decks won't be able to compete. So the only deck that can compete is the blue-based unsummoned decks, tempo decks, that can play with four copies of Spell Pierce plus uh, um, uh, uh, four copies of Repeal um, to beat this back. So they can either counter it or they can bounce a token and draw a card um, and keep up with that deck by pecking away with 1-1 one, one flyers overhead and unblockable creatures on the ground. You can occasionally probably swing in and switch in for a ninja once or twice, but then after that, the ninjas aren't going to get in. So I don't even think that you... I, I, I still have deciding if you'd want to use the ninjas in, this, in the tempo deck against slime, or if you're just better off just playing Flyers and not bothering with the Ninja card advantage uh, engine. So, yep, um, going to be very interesting to uh, build with this card. As I said when I covered my green uh, set review, I think the home for this deck is going to be a Simic. It's going to be the best because it gives you the slime and the ways to fill your graveyard, but then blue gives you bounce for the mirror. And so I think Simic will have the leg up in the mirror of Slime Deck against Slime Deck. And then um, it'll be really interesting, actually. Well, I don't know. It might be interesting. It might be kind of boring. Uh, slime versus Slime Simic matchups, because then it's really clutch on when you unsummon their slime or not. Um, and how long you can wait off on unsummoning their slime. Uh, yeah, that might be just be just boring. You might just wait to the very end and then unsummon and then crash in for lethal. So it might not be that interesting. Um, yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, slime time on historic popper and explore popper. It's legal there too. 
uh, and then we'll see about if it's going to need to be banned. In Paper Popper, I don't think this card is as strong as um, uh, is it's going to be on Arena. Arena, we'd lack the efficient removal spells and efficient counter spells to really hold uh, a three mana sorcery in check. Uh, and so it, I think it can really run away on Arena. On paper, I think there's enough tools that you can um, definitely beat this deck with a bunch of other decks. And so it shouldn't really be too oppressive or boring um, in the meta. All right. Well, see you guys uh, for more Historic Popper games and deck reviews and uh, other stuff. Uh, link down below for our Discord if you want to join us uh, and play some matches and play... Play against me playing slime or play play slime against me. Uh, it will be fun. See ya.